Hi, this is Kirby Kramer. I'm kind of new on the Kit Fox list, but I wish it had been around many years ago when I built my Kit Fox. I had some requests from some guys on the list to see the old Subaru engine that I installed back in 1993. So I thought I'd do that and then also give you some updates on this Kit Fox that was parked for 16 years. So this is a Subaru EA81 that was built by NSI back about 1992 and it's served me very well. Uh, it's a little heavier than a 912, I think 40 or 50 pounds, so quite a bit heavier, but it has gobs of torque. Uh, about 98 horsepower was claimed and uh, you can see it's also got a redrive on it and it's kind of unique in that it's on a Sprague clutch. So it eliminates most of the torsional vibration There is a new warp drive propeller that I've got set for about 22 degrees and a fiberglass spinner that warp drive cells. I uh, went through the engine, didn't take it apart, but everything seemed to check out well. Rebuilt the air box. Uh, had a little trouble with the muffler cracking over the years. Uh, these little tabs in particular, so I had those re-welded. And then this is new, this is a heat shield blanket that I put on the muffler to keep some of the heat when you're taxing away from the fiberglass. Seems to work really, really well. Uh, the radiator on this one was actually a sprint car radiator. It's brass, a little heavier, but very conductive. You can see even in our warm temperatures here, it still doesn't get too hot. That's actually so I can get it up to temperature by reducing a little airflow. I think the gearbox is about 2.38 to 1. Something else that made the Subaru unique was the ignition system, which is two MSD electronic ignitions that fire through four individual coils that go through only one set of spark plugs. So you've got a diode, which is part of NSI's idea, so that the ignitions can't feed back on each other and beneath these little plates, you can adjust the ignition advance. Uh, dry sump tank is up here, water tanks on the side here. And one of the other modifications was to shorten the oil pan and make these custom engine mounts. These are actually the rubbers or lord mounts. Going around to the inside of the airplane, uh, it had 1992 instrumentation. So I opted to uh, put in an iPad uh, with ForeFlight, which works really well. Uh, new instruments from UMA in Virginia. This is a Dinon D3, which isn't working because we're in the hangar today. Then I upgraded the radio, uh, used the old transponder, and was able to install uh, ADSB through UAvionics in a neat little package that fits right behind the seat. It's about the size of a cassette tape. Um, I also replaced the front brakes with new Matco units, which work really well, and replaced the wheels and tires. I don't do a lot of off-road stuff, so I wanted a small, lightweight tire. It's just a five by five, and it seems to do the job really well. That's all for now. Thanks.